How's it going, everyone? This is Max. And I'm Matt. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Sega Saturn, Saturn Saturdays. So welcome everyone to the inaugural episode of Sega Saturn Saturdays. Uh, we wanted to do something to kind of celebrate one of our favorite systems of all time, the Sega Saturn, which is now what, like 15 years old or more? Uh, this would actually be the 17th year, I believe. My God. My God. So we want to do a little something special. We want to look back, take a look about, look back at the history of the system, look back at the history of some of the games, kind of take the nostalgia glasses off, see how awesome they were, and see how well good they, we think they are now. Uh, if there's a little bit of the history of the Saturn, could you possibly highlight us what happened at the beginning of Sega's launch of their new system? Sure. So the Sega Saturn was the third generation of Sega hardware and Sega always had a weird predicament where their systems were always really popular in some other country. The Sega Master System found a lot of success in South America and parts of Europe but it never really caught on in Japan or America. On the other hand, the Genesis, otherwise known as the Mega Drive elsewhere, was huge in America and that's because it kind of got released early. And it never really caught on in Japan and really was second fiddle to the Super NES. So, Sega kind of gave America a little bit more leeway during the Genesis era, but what happened was is during the Sega CD and 32X fiascos, Sega Japan decided they wanted to try to take more control over their destiny. But the 32X was an amazing system for Star Wars. It was a graphical powerhouse. And it was a physical powerhouse too, it, it felt very good. Alright, no more talking from I'm you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, the company was always founded as sort of like, you know, an American slash Japanese company, but they were really most mostly based in Japan. And they wanted the success that they found, you know, in America, and they wanted that for themselves in Japan as well. So that's kind of why the Saturn became more Japanese-centric and focused. So Basically what happened was is all the decisions of release dates and games and everything sort of like came from Japan for the rest of the world. And unfortunately the markets are very different and yeah. it's kind of a hard truth that, you know, history kind of repeats itself over and over that a lot of these companies have to learn. So really what happened was the Saturn was not a bad system by any stretch of the imagination. The problem was is all the timing and releases and everything associated with the games kind of all came from Japan. If there's also one thing that's always been really curious to myself, and we talk about this a lot, it's the origins of the system and kind of like how the Saturn came to be and how it was kind of like a rush job. Like the PlayStation was just coming in at the time and the PlayStation was this kind of like, well at the time, a graphical powerhouse. And people were going nuts over how like Battle Arena Toshenden and Destruction Derby looked. But the Saturn like knew about it and they put like a last minute 3D chip into yeah. the system, which the system was meant to be 2D. Like that's why the Saturn does 2D games so well, is because it was meant to be a badass like Super Nintendo. Yeah. But it ended up being like kind of not that. Yeah. Well, actually, the hardware history of the system is as convoluted and, and sort of messy as the as the political side of it as well. Because what happened was the Saturn was in development technically for a while, but they were kind of flip-flopping on what they wanted to do. Originally, they kind of were going with one of two angles. Either it was going to be a more 3D system, or it was going to be more like a really supercharged 2D system. And very early on, they originally decided, we're going to go with the more supercharged 2D system. What happened, though, was as PlayStation got closer to its launch, they kind of announced that you know they were working with all these partners and we're going to have like this amazing 3D chip in it and kind of kind of blew the doors off and, and like wowed everybody and that kind of really annoyed Sega of Japan to the point where they basically said okay guys uh, 3D we made the kind of the wrong call 3D is going to be like the future here we really need to put a 3D chip it was in like it. a last ditch effort it was a last ditch because they basically okay. didn't have any time to like assemble like or start from scratch so yeah. they kind of took whatever parts they could get wholesale and basically what happened was is they kind of almost had like it's, it's not accurate, but in an easy way to say it, it's like it had two graphics engines in the system. So the console history of the Saturn has been through quite a bit of drama, like besides all the different technical innards of the system, a lot of the stuff that we know and remember of the Saturn of why we're trying to share this show with you guys and see what your opinion is about what some of the best games were for the system. So of those launch titles we were talking about, uh, I think a real good one to start this off would be the Racing Classic, the one that absolutely everyone who's ever touched a video game probably has heard of, and it's Daytona USA, so let's get it fired up. All right. Stupid Hornet. 
So in this one, B is accelerate for some reason. What the hell? So. I don't care as long as we roll away. Rolling stop! Oh my god. You're on the bottom. I understand where I'm at. Oh my god! Uh, just let go of the button. Get off me! No, dude, I need to win. These aren't speeder bikes on Endor. These are fucking Daytona cars. I understand. You know, other than like, you know, the, the kind of like massive pop in, the game runs really fast and smooth still. It definitely looks fast. Before this, as far as 3D racers were concerned, I don't know if a uh, Rage Racer or Ridge Racer, whatever the uh, very, very, very first Ridge Racer game was, um, if there was any other competition besides virtual racing, and that was another Sega game. Yeah, and that was actually much earlier than this, but you know, it was one of the earliest prototypes of 3D Yeah, that was, it was a freaking tech demo, if you'd ever yeah, seen it. Yeah, the definition of it. But this, on the other hand, this was fast, this was visceral, it had had a license that was beloved across most of America. If there's something about Daytona too, because I, after Daytona USA and Sega Rally, I kind of strictly followed Sega racers and I loved them to death. Daytona was one of the first games, like racing games, to introduce like a crazy drifting mechanic in a 3D environment. I mean, OutRun really had a lot of it too, ahead of time. Yeah. But um, yeah, Daytona was one of the first. You know, I'm really not a fan of racers to be honest, but I'm still having a pretty good time with this. What, because you just passed me? Yeah. Who said you could over clips me? Get out of my way. Oh, man. I won? How, how did I lose? Oh, it's hard to say. Like it's. It, well, I think it just let you win because it knows you're a racing fan. This, this is going to get... Actually, this isn't as bad as the Versus. I, I don't think the system actually even has the, the power to add other racers in Versus. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. First stage, you don't need it as much. <laughs> yeah, dude, if, if there were truck trailers I could jump off of and get money for it, I'd do it. Whoa, drifting. So yeah, you can kind of see the influence on other Sega racing games uh, through this stage alone. You know, very outrun, very crazy taxi, um, and then just the handling in, in a way it was a lot like Sega Super GT, which would come out later. God, I love that game so much. Honestly, one of the best racing games of the 90s. Whoa! It said left! That's a wall, son! And we died right. Son of a mother. <laughs> G-A-M-E-O-V-E-R. Son of a bitch. Game over, yeah! So Daytona USA on the Sega Saturn, even though we were playing Championship Edition, which actually came a little bit later after the original one, and you would think there'd be some graphical upgrades, but man, that does not run anything anything like I remember it running. Like, I honestly can tell you, I remember it being almost arcade perfect back when I was younger. And it is not the case now, but... Well, I mean, yeah, not arcade perfect, but I think it had it where it counted. It, yeah, the, the sensation of speed is still there with the game. But I think the biggest issue was kind of like the frame rate and the pop-in. It's, it's rough playing that and understanding that games back in the day had that. But what the game did, like we were saying, introduced drifting mechanics, had a sense of speed, uh, unbeknownst to anything in the arcade at the time. Like, Cruisin' USA was the only other game, I would say, that had a sense of speed. Yeah, and that was really just OutRun. And yeah, so Cruisin' USA was just, yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good comparison. So, in summary, Daytona's a good game. If you want to play this game, you do not need a Sega Saturn to play the arcade perfect version of Daytona USA. It's actually out on Xbox Live Arcade. Did it come out on PSN? I'm not sure, but I do know for a fact that it's actually not arcade perfect because it's actually a little bit better than the arcade. That's better. Graphics are up res, the draw distance is like even further out. There is it's, no draw distance really. It's arcade excellent. Yeah, so if, if you want to play the game now, and uh, you can download it on Xbox Live Arcade, uh, it won't be the most technical racer and it isn't the most feature rich racer, but you will still get like a very good arcade fun I'll bet short yeah. uh, racing experience. I think it's got up to like eight players online. Uh, if we can, I'll use a little bit of footage from yeah. Daytona USA. Even better, the game. even better, the Xbox Live version has a karaoke mode. So all the famous, Hallelujah. all the famous soundtrack, you know, from this game, you can actually sing along to while playing it. So that's going to just about sum up the first episode of Sega Saturn Saturdays. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And what are we going to look into for the next episode? I think we're going to look into probably one of the most famous of all Sega Saturn games. And the one that kind of ushered in a whole new era of presentation for video games in general. Panzer Dragoon. I was going to say Mortal Kombat. No. Okay. <laughs> Panzer Dragoon is one of my favorite games of all time. Especially its sequel, Panzer Dragoon's Vi. 
and more sequels that came after that. So I'm looking forward to that. So stick with us until the next episode of Sega Saturn Saturday where we take a look at Panzer Dragoon and maybe go into a little bit of the history of one of Sega's greatest marketing advertisements or strategies we've ever seen in Sega Tassanchiro. If you do not know who Sega Tassanchiro is, we will tell you and he will find you and beat the holy shit out of you and your family for not playing Sega Saturn. That's right. We're not joking. See you guys next time on Sega, Sega Saturn, Saturn Saturdays. Saturday.